What's up, Who fans? It's Gary with Hobby Lottery, and today I'm doing a tutorial for you. I'm just going to walk you through the process on how I inspect my cards for grading uh, prior to sending them off. So I kind of new to the hobby. I've been back in for just a little under a year and a half, and I figured like if I'm going to make it, the one thing I got to do is teach myself how to grade cards and what to look for. So I watched videos, I bought a tool to help out, and I'm going to show you beginning to end and basically how I can inspect the card within about a minute um, and get back pretty decent results. Results. So I actually tallied it up. So, so far I sent 120 cards to GMA and out of those 120, I've had a total of nine come back as nines and one of them was a PC card and the other ones were just some print lines that I missed. All the others came back as tens. Uh, most of them are in my, my repack products um, in my eBay store. I got a few that are for sale singles and then just most of these are actually some PC cards also. And then I get it, I know people aren't, they think GMA is too lenient and you know they're stricter than most give them credit for, but some people think they have no credibility when they do. And when I got my SGC results back, I'm like, okay, I feel like I've done okay enough to where I feel comfortable like presenting how I go about doing it, because it seems to, you know, at least work, at least for me. So though it may be a small sample size uh, compared to some bulk submitters, uh, this is what I got. So these videos are on my channel, but in case you didn't see them, you know, we got 10s um, in the background here, the LeBrons, the Pascal, the John Moran. Those are all 10s from SGC, and they are a tough grade, as we all know. So with that being said, I'm just going to kind of clear out some of this background here. I'm going to walk you through how I taught myself how to grade cards, and then I'm going to show you quick, like one, one and a half minute, how I do it, and then boom, whether it goes on a card saver and gets sent to grading, or if it goes back into the pile, as not going to get a 10. So let's cut to this next clip. Okay guys, now for this clip here, I'm just gonna walk you through the actual materials that I use. So all I use, a microfiber cloth. I mean, you can find a lot of these uh, for cheap on eBay, Amazon as well. I mean, like 50 cents to a dollar a piece. Go ahead and pick you up five of them. And um, it only costs you a few bucks, a good investment. So just a microfiber cloth, no chemicals or anything there. This is the loop that I use. So I know you won't be able to see through it, but I like it because it does have a built-in light. It helps good, though you can't tell on camera. It actually has measuring lines on the inside in millimeter increments. So you can kind of get idea of looking through this loop as to how the centering looks and how the borders look. But you really, I don't really use that function of this loop too much. And um, I picked this one up for $14.99 on eBay. If I can find the link, I'll try and put it in the description. Um, it comes in this nice case here. I never take it out of the case at all. I try to keep it as lint free as possible. Whenever I do lay it down, it's on its side just so lint never gets in there or in through this portion as well. And now this, this is the most important thing I use. So I feel confident, though I can't guarantee anything. Um, I believe this tool can get you just about 100% centering uh, almost every time it's so well designed and you know I don't endorse it I don't know the guy that made it or anything I'm just telling you what I did to help me out and I don't even know if it's showing up but it's actually here's is the information that comes on what I bought it uh, when I when I bought it off eBay so there you go you can read I won't read it back to you you can email to look for it, or again, I will try to see if the listing's still active and send it to you on eBay. But this was $14.99, and it has, this is gonna be very difficult to see. I may get some thumbs downs as I try to zoom in on the card to walk you through what I do, uh, but I'm doing my best to try and present it to you. But it has a grid of numbers outlined here to measure the centering of it. And then on here, depending on how the numbers line up, it tells you if you're 50-50 centering or not. So I'll explain that to you. So those are the tools that I use. Now let me just walk you through the process. Okay guys, so first thing I do pretty much, um, I have a poster board that I grade on. I use one cloth uh, and they stay in their packages all the time. I wipe the surface clean, just the whole little area I plan to use, brush it off, get rid of that and then I use um, a, a compressor air, um, dang compressed air can to, to kind of clean these after each, each usage so once I clean area free of all dust I have another one that I'll use to wipe down the card okay now let's say this is the card we'll start off with mosaic first so I've done really well with mosaic Don Russ base and then optic these are all 1920 sets for basketball I'll take the card out of my penny sleeve 
and you know we'll just assume that this is spotless i know the centering is perfect on the two cards that i'm using for this video but we're just going to assume again just for video sakes that everything else is perfect on it so i'll get the, the card i immediately i look at the four corners i'll look there 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 is it sharp for chrome cards i don't ever inspect them with the magnifier i give them a little harlem shake in the light looking for dents and dimples and scratches and print lines because oftentimes it depends a lot on the angle when you're holding the chrome card if you'll pick up on the defects you won't find them for simply zooming in i use the zooming in on my loop for the cardboard cards like the don russ here okay so we'll get to that card next once i've done that i basically will flip it over I'm sorry, I actually skipped a step. I look at the four corners on the back as well before I ever wipe it down to check the, the um, centering. So I look at the back, I make sure there's nothing there, and then I'm gonna walk you through the centering process for Mosaic, and then I'll walk you through on Don Russ. Okay guys, so you're just gonna have to bear with me on this. I was gonna try and painters tape it down and try it some different ways, but no matter what, the thing moves out of the way, so I just have to do it live, holding my hand on top itself. But if you can see, there's a dot here in the middle, which I always use to put my pointer finger on, and then what I'll do, so we're assuming it's past everything else. It looks good, edges look good, corners look sharp, there's no blemishes, we're focusing just on centering. What I'll do, I'll activate the light on this, and then I will zoom in on the corner. So the first thing I do is I hit all four corners of the card, and I'm doing this just for exaggeration purposes on camera, but I loop the four corners to make sure it's lined up on this grid. So if you can see, and again, bear with me, I mean, the best I can do with my camera setup, let me get the pin here. So it has four corners for each border. The main thing you need to do when I use this tool, I make sure the corners hit exactly in all the spots it's evenly centered and then I have my index finger down over the dot in the middle and what I've done it has all these grid lines I don't know how well it's picking up for you guys but there's a three here on this grid okay so once I look through like hundreds of these cards I started to learn the pattern the three for mosaic at least on this tool the three should hit right outside of the mosaic emblem and then I'm sorry if it defocuses, folks, but I'm going to try to get you a little closer to the <clears throat> action here. Okay. So the three, it wraps right around the mosaic emblem. And then it hits right at the top of the mosaic emblem, this grid line. And it usually goes right across the top of the player's head. And then it, it circles around the card. And Mosaic is a lot harder, of course, than like Don Russ or Optic, just for the fact that the borders aren't clear. But this tool makes it pretty clear. And then as we go down to this portion here, the bottom, doing my absolute best for you folks. So remember that three, I think it's defocusing now. Oh, I think that's a good shot, actually. So remember that three? that hit the mosaic emblem, notice how it falls right below Chris Paul's name, and then the, the four, this is like, I think, millimeter increments. The four is in the middle, it's this dotted line, and then there's the five. So this card is actually perfectly centered. The name usually falls right between the five and the three. It's like perfectly in that little square there. And then as I kind of went around the card, that three line, I lost my pen. That three line, it hits the side of the mosaic emblem and then the top, and then it goes across the top of the player's name. Now, this is how you do mosaic. It is a little different for the NBA debut cards. If you guys recall those, I didn't have any on standby. It's a little different. And then the rookie cards, the, the rookie card emblem, I believe it's actually in the opposite direction, but the rookie card emblem hits the same spot on the three, and then it, it matches up and aligns itself with the mosaic emblem, the RC and the mosaic emblem. So that's how I tell for mosaic cards. It is a little different for the inserts. Like I said, the Hall of Fame and the NBA debut, it's, it's slightly different here. Oh, and then another thing too, you may have heard some people mention how, and I think I've knocked this a little off since I've been moving the camera around, but for mosaic, this border, the name, that centering kind of gives it away too, but what I've noticed with this tool, the six lines up perfectly with the top of the, the text box, I guess you could say. It should go six, four, two. That usually means perfect centering for a mosaic card. So that's how I kind of learned. I basically, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna teach myself. I basically had a stack 
of mosaic cards and I just went through each and every one of them, no matter how basic or valuable it was, just to teach myself the pattern. That's mosaic. Don Russ is a lot easier. I'm going to show you that real quick and then I'll walk you through how I basically do a quick scan. Okay guys, now I'm back with a Don Russ example, this Malcolm Brogdon card. So understand, my hand may move these borders as I'm filming, but I just hope the concept is getting through to you. So like I stated, you make sure the card is aligned. I only loop the, the four corners once I'm ready to inspect it for grading to make sure the card is dead center. And like I said, it's gonna definitely move as I'm filming this without question. So this is a perfectly centered card, I know. Now here's the thing. So this Malcolm Brogdon, here's how you, it's easier on cards with borders like Don Russ Synoptic. The three, it hits right at the top of, of this, like above the Don Russ box at the top of the card. And then of course there's no, this is a blank area up here. And then if you look down bottom, come on, I gotta hold my finger right. I think I did it okay without moving. The three hits. right down at the bottom. So it's perfect centering up to down. You with me guys? Now this three, let's, let's walk with it around the corner, up the top. This is where the three is right here. And I'm sorry, I do loop. I loop the four corners to make sure it's even underneath and then I will loop the numbers to make sure it's even. So the three line lines up on the border of the left. Let's go to the right as best as I can for you. Uh, I don't want to knock it more out of focus. But the three, where's the pin? The three is over here as well. So you guys with me? It's three all the way around. Now, it's a whole lot easier with, with Don Russ and Optic. And then, of course, as you can see here, I don't know if you noticed the Malcolm Brogdon's name. I just want to show you this real quick, how the stars kind of align with this. His name is like in between perfectly, like the 10 and like the 8 line just about. You notice these patterns the more you look through these cards. Oh, I'm going to relieve my finger of stretching that out. Now, that's when this tool... I hope this is coming through good for you guys. So that's when this tool that um, this gentleman designed here comes into effect. So as you can see, 3-3 three, three is 50-50 centering. Um, now when you do look at prism cards, it's a little different. I haven't, honestly, I haven't hardly found any perfect centering of 1920 prism, but they get a little different, you know. It gets, you know how it's like wide at the bottom and then it's like thicker at the top type deal with those prism cards. Um, let's see if I got an example. Thank God I had this nearby. How it's like wide at the bottom and then up at the top. So you'd be looking at two sets of numbers, but basically, instead of a three, three, the border might be different. It might be like a seven, and then you know it just kind of tells you here. So this tool breaks down the centering. And let's say it was slightly off. Let's say you had like a four. Well, that's badly off. But let's say you had like a three, two, or something like that. It lets you know it's 60, 40 centering. So that's kind of how this tool comes into effect. Um, the gr the grades it gives you in terms of making sure it's aligned and then the grid though It's not really visible held up to the air I hope that it made sense with you guys seeing it through the cards and it came through now When I do inspect cardboard cards, I do use the loop for those because here's what will happen like the ink the gold stamp on these cards here there will be like gold flakes in different parts of the card and you doing it in the light, giving a little Harlem shake, you won't pick up on it. So I will loop cardboard cards, um, the Chronicles cards, the, the NBA hoops and Don Russ. But Chrome cards, I don't loop for defects. I just Harlem shake like I stated earlier. And that's it. Um, I see if there's a dimple or a scratch or a line like that. So that I hope that was helpful for the Don Russ. And then this last clip will just mean I basically can do it in like one to two minutes now um, as I'm preparing like bulk submissions. All right, and this is how I keep a rhythm and inspect quickly. So I got my team break results. One cloth, wipe my area down, make sure there's no dust there. Get out a cloth for the card. Take it out, of, take the card out of my penny sleeve. Four corners, sharp, sharp, sharp. Look at the back, four corners, any white, sharp, sharp, it passes the corners test. Flip it back over, Harlow shake from top to bottom. Any pimples, dents, scratches, fingerprints, there's actually one there, but for the sake of the video. Lay it down, it passed all that portion. Time for centering. So I'll give it a quick wipe down there. Bust out the centering tool. 
line it up underneath, this is the longest part, loop the four corners, magnify it in, make sure it's perfectly lined up inside the grid while pressing down of course. It passes the centering test that I just walked you through. I used the sleeve that I picked it up with or that I had it in to flip it over, okay? And then for the back, I don't lay it back down on the chrome. I'll lay it back down on the sleeve. Kind of look it over again, make sure there's nothing on the back. Gentle wipe down there. Take the card, sleeve it up. Put it in the card saver. Which I sucked at putting cards in card savers at first. I used to almost bend the card while putting it in, but I've gotten better. Basically, you just want to squeeze them tight. Not too tight, but use your index finger like that to open the card saver. Then you kind of just put the card right there. It'll slide in mostly. Ease it in. Sorry, I think a lot of that was off camera. And then you don't have to worry about getting... Well, that one actually worked out. It went pretty far down, but sometimes it might stick out. You bang it on the palm of your hand, it gets it deep in there. You don't have to worry about bending or damaging the card because I was not very good at putting cards in card savers uh, when I first started this. But that's how you do it. And that's how I get tens, man. That's how I get gems. So that's how I learn. Basically, what you need to do, pick up this centering tool. I would suggest it. Again, I'm not in, I don't work with this, this guy. Get yourself a pile of mosaic or Don Rust. Teach yourself one brand of card first. You know, get a pattern, get a rhythm, and just go through every single card, lining it up with the tool, wiping them down. Get yourself an eye for centering with using this. The only thing that seems very subjective to me is, is, is edges. Like that, that's just like up in the air, you know? But you can look at corners, you can tell with this tool, you can definitely get centers right. And you can definitely, you know, of course, with magnifying and the, perf the right lighting, you can see if there's any defects on on the cards so you know i hope this is definitely helpful to some um i think this is the first yeah this is definitely the first tutorial i've ever done but that's how i expect my cards for grading i got some team break results for like i bought like half the nba out in optic team breaks uh those should be coming in this week we'll do a break and a giveaway on that but i do thank you all for watching really hope this was helpful let me know in the comments down below was this video helpful to you uh, yes or no. And then if you have anything you'd like for me to try to help you out with, I'm open to creating those video ideas as well. But stay safe. Be blessed. Keep on collecting.